Dear friends in Christ Jesus, today we have begun the season of Advent, the new liturgical cycle. And on this day, as we begin to prepare ourselves to receive our Saviour once again into our lives, we have a very, very wonderful message which is very much striking for every one of us. Once, a woman went to a priest for confession. She confessed her sins and the priest gave her an unusual penance. The penance is, he gave her a bunch of feathers and as the woman, as she goes to her house to take the feathers one each and throw up into the air, the woman took the bunch of feathers, started plucking one each from the bunch and she threw the feathers into the air. She went home finished throwing the feathers in the air and again she returned back to the priest and said, Father, I have done what you have asked me to do. And the priest plainly told her, My dear, now you go and pick up all the feathers what you have threw into the air. The woman was perplexed at that moment and she said, Father, but how can I? It is not possible for me to go and collect the feathers what I have thrown into the air. And the father said, that is true. And this is what happens, my dear. Whenever we ridicule the other person, whenever we damage the character of our neighbor, and whenever we hurt any other person by our anger and by our egoistic attitude, we can't repair it, we can't get it back. This is what we need to control ourselves. And at this moment, I'd like to say the beautiful saying. The saying goes in this way, the tongue should be used to bless rather than to curse to compliment rather than to criticize, to highlight the good deeds rather than to focus and the, and the, on the bad qualities. Friends in Christ, today we need to just realize that we need to accept the message which God the Almighty has given us and we need to really prepare ourselves be alert and watchful with our way of life, how we live. And as we enter into the season of Advent, the word Advent comes from the Latin word Adventus, which says coming. For whose coming are we preparing? And of course, every one of us will answer, we are preparing for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. But the question is, Jesus Christ had already come 2,000 years ago. And our preparation and our waiting is once again for the second coming of our Savior. When he came in the beginning at the first coming, he brought the love, joy, peace and happiness into the lives of the people. He shed his blood from the cross. He brought salvation for every one of us. He has given us freedom and he has shown us how to love, how to forgive, how to live our life in peace and serenity. And now Christ is not coming once again in his second coming to save us, but rather to judge us. He is going to judge every one of us. He had already given us love. He has already shown us the way of life. He has already shown us the forgiveness. And now, dear friends in Christ, Christ is going to come at the second coming only to judge every one of us. And are we ready and alert and watchful and prepared for this judgment is the question today for every one of us. 
friends in Christ, we have to always be alert. That's what today the gospel reading is very beautifully saying. The master of the house is going far away and he has given his servants each according to their capacity some sort of responsibility to be done. And nobody knows when the master of the house will come and every one of them should be alert and should be watchful and should be responsible in doing the responsibility given for them. In a similar way, God our Savior, by giving this beautiful life for every one of us, and especially he has chosen every one of us by anointing us through baptism and the sacraments. He has blessed us and filled us with the Holy Spirit, giving us a special responsibility, and that is to love and to forgive and to take care of our neighbor. And are we faithful in this given responsibility for every one of us? Or are we just looking for our own comfort zones and unable to take care of our neighbor, forgetting to look into our neighbor's happiness? Most of the time, dear friends in Christ, we are not bothered about our neighbor. We are becoming mostly a selfish person always trying to bring our own happiness, our own gratifications, our own pleasures in our day-to-day -day life. But Christ has specially chosen us, anointed us, filled us with the Holy Spirit, asking every one of us to love and to forgive, to have kindness and concern towards our neighbor. If we have failed in being kind and in being able to take care of our neighbor, then, dear friends in Christ, we need to face the judgment at the second coming. And why and how we need to prepare ourselves today is the question. And I would like to propose three important things where we need to really transform ourselves. The first thing is we need to renew the way we speak. Our tongue plays a vital role in our spiritual journey. Every time, whenever we get angry, and in anger, whenever we curse our neighbor, we do a lot of damage to our neighbor. But today, dear friends in Christ, we need to focus mostly on our tongue, how and what we speak. And then, when we renew ourselves, our speech, then we fall into the right destination in working towards the kingdom of God the Almighty. And secondly, dear friends in Christ, we need to renew the way we act. We need the witnesses in the world. We need to be witness to everything what we speak. Only we bear witness to the verbal words what we speak, but rather in our actions we fail to bear witness. Today we need to do some sort of acts as a witness to the words what we speak and to the faith what we believe. So we need to renew our acts. And thirdly, dear friends in Christ, we need to renew our, our attitude. When we look into our own personal selves and see, our attitude plays a vital role. But if we have the attitude of being an egoist, being a selfish person, being timid, and a possessive person, then we will not be able to be the true member of the kingdom of God. Our attitude plays an important role. We need to be a person of love and concern. And when our attitude is filled with egoism and selfishness, then the values of the kingdom can be exercised in our spiritual journey. That's why we need to renew our attitude. And finally, dear friends in Christ, we need to renew our deeds. And to conclude,
I would like to say the beautiful saying, if a child lives in criticism, the child learns to find fault. If a child lives in hostility, the child learns to fight. If a child lives in encouragement, the child finds confidence. If a child lives in praise, the child learns to be appreciative. And if a child lives in love, the child's life will become love. So friends in Christ, our attitude plays a vital role. So we need to renew ourselves in the form of speech, in the form of acts, and our attitude and our deeds. And then, dear friends in Christ, we will be ever ready to receive our Master. And we will be able to face the second coming of our Savior, our judgment. And we will be always a person establishing the kingdom in our lives, in our families, and in the society around. So, the Master is coming not to save us, but to judge us. Be watchful, be alert, and be prepared. Amen.